this is a return visit to me uh, for me after eight years, uh, and it's very nice to return to Nepal and to Easy Mode, and to have an opportunity to share with you. I'm going to talk about the International Forestry Resources and Institutions Research Program. Uh, so the central question is, how do alternative systems of governance and tenure affect uh, social and ecological? Another that is very important, particularly for the social sciences, are what conditions favor collective action. Uh, there was a period of time until very recently that the work of Anser Olson and of Garrett Hardin had convinced people that uh, there was a tragedy in the commons and uh, that people were not able to cope with it. And uh, we've now found a lot of evidence that that theory is wrong, but we need to understand then how do uh, people respond to changing ecological conditions as well as how do they organize themselves socially and how do diverse user groups, uh, local associations, local governments, uh, national governments, how do they all work together? And in terms of understanding, looking at this relationship between what local uh, users of a forest do and what happens in the forest, uh, in the 18 sites that were involved in that study, there was a very strong relationship between uh, the uh, level of collective action by the farmers and users of the forest. Did they meet regularly? Did they have a effort to patrol? Did they uh, find ways of what, uh, a clear understanding of what could be harvested, what couldn't? And what you find is that when the collective activity is high, the forest condition is much more likely to improve. One of the things that we did find uh, and is that uh, in communities that were quite heterogeneous, they frequently developed rules that were very tailored to the local circumstances. And so some of the rules that worked in one community did not work in another and did not work in another. If we then go to a study uh, done by Amika Gotham, uh, looking at, again, uh, one of the presumptions is that the size of group uh, is uh, a major factor affecting the impact. And what we're finding is that uh, it's kind of a curvilinear relationship. If the group is too small, they can't really manage to do things. If it's very, very large, you sometimes find that uh, there are challenges. You can't either take size or heterogeneity as an absolute and presume that uh, they always uh, are the same. Um, and again, in terms of heterogeneity, we find a mixed impact in, uh, in terms of looking at forest conditions. Uh, so that it is not just that the more heterogeneous are always worse or the more are always better. Okay, I'm going to go on to an important question that we studied across a large number of sites. The presumption is that earlier, is that the locals can't manage in Nepal, obviously, you showed they can. When we were first doing our research, uh, while we had many countries, they were located in a variety of ecological zones. One of our colleagues uh, did a very extended study of over 150 of our samples across the whole world. And uh, she was particularly interested in whether or not officially designated parks were performing better. Uh, our analysis shows no relationship. Now, if formal designation does not make a difference, what do we find across a large number of sites? We have a very surprising finding, and it's very strong now, because we've looked at it in multiple ways. When the users themselves monitor, forest conditions get better. Then, uh, in the later uh, proceedings of the National Academy Science paper, that. Uh, uh, Harini Nijendra and I did, we were able at that point to look at a much smaller site set, but over time. Uh, we then were looking at whether there was a, a change in the uh, diameter breast height in the forest, was there a change in basal area, and was there a change in stem count. And we looked then at, was there, uh, we looked again at formal uh, designation of government, community, private, and there's no relationship between these. See, these concepts are so big 
that they're not that meaningful. Uh, then we also, as we had mentioned, we also always ask if the user group is involved in, is involved in monitoring. And here we do have a very strong relationship in terms of change in basal area and change in stem count. We now have a study of over 100 forests in <coughs> countries over time. And a very big statistical relationship in using a social ecological systems framework. And uh, colleagues, uh, several colleagues in terms of uh, uh, Eric Coleman and Brian Steed and uh, Arun Agarwal and Ashwini uh, Chhatri have found that when local groups have the right to harvest from a forest, they're more likely to engage in monitoring. A lot of people, when they first saw some of these results, said, if they harvest, they'll take it all down. Having rights doesn't mean you have a right to clear an entire forest. But if you have no rights, why do you have any interest in protecting it at all? Then, if they can harvest, the, uh, harvesting non-timber forest products is, for many farming families, essential. So, uh, uh, one of my slogans <coughs> is, keeping the users out of having any rights to the forest is not a panacea. Well, I, my big thing is, there are none. The crucial problem that we face is matching forest governance to the local ecology social setting, traditions, economy, and interests of the forest users. And it's how to enable uh, those who have a history and a local knowledge as well as access to more general. We have developed uh, at Indiana a theory of polycentric governance. One of the advantages of polycentrism is having large systems where there's oversight, some fundamental uh, legal system, rule of law, scientific knowledge. Uh, there's an incredible amount of indigenous knowledge out there. And what we are in the need of is blending scientific knowledge with local knowledge. And at this point, I think I will open it up for questions. And the most important thing that just like some cases in Nepal, there are success stories, but we don't have any mechanism to replicate and upscale. Experience in other parts of the world have opened up ways to manage um, invasive species. Principles you develop in the management of local commerce in forest irrigation, other. How this lesson can be used? What kind of forest governance arrangements might be suitable? What are the roles of the communities in the management of the parks? How to convince governments that, uh, to, to accept this uh, diversity and to deal with this diversity? So I'm wondering about what your thoughts are about the personal sacrifices of people who are working on common property issues. Now, with the increasing carbon market, how do you think the development of community forestry in this region will be affected? With a little bit of back and forth between knowledge from others with indigenous knowledge, they were able to really get income. The development of very useful tools that is something that EC Mode and other, other groups can be doing, uh, where you're bringing the science, but you're not presenting it in a scientific paper in a big journal. You're presenting it in a way that is readable and understandable. So if we start getting learning as a core part of what we're doing in developing either uh, by, uh, research or uh, policy, and how do we enhance the learning of people involved on a variety of fronts, that is very important. We need to be encouraging local entrepreneurs who really are using local products. Now new study 17 things that can be done in a household that will reduce carbon emissions. And it's again, how do we get that knowledge out so that people can do it? And yet cumulatively, it is what all of us do that makes a difference.